Oh, hi there. Our Vaigurjika Kalsa Vaigurjiki Fate, our Tetsuya Kal. Today I'll be discussing a brief background on Sikhism. Sikhism was founded by Guru Nanak Dev Ji in 1469. Our sacred scripture is the Guru Granth Sahib Ji, which is written by multiple authors from multiple backgrounds, including different castes representing key ideas of equality in Sikhism. It is placed in a Gurdwara, which is a Sikh place of worship, and attached to it is the Langar Hall, where food is served for free, and everyone sits at the same level, representing equality. Sikhism is a monotheistic religion focused on equality, justice for all, and religious pluralism, which are the same ideals as in American society today. Let me repeat that, which are the same ideals as in American society today. For example, there's a large focus on women's rights and women's equality. Many fight for women's rights today, but treating a woman lower than a man in Sikhism is a crime. Let me provide you with an example from a morning prayer that Sikhs are required to do. Pand jamiya, pand namiya, pand mangan viyaho, pando hove dosti, pando chalu raho, pand mua pand pali, pand hove bandhan, sokyo manda akhiya, jit jamme rajan, pando hi pand upje, pande bajna koe. The first line states, from woman man is born, and to woman man is engaged. The second line states that, Woman becomes man's friend, and through women, the future generations come. The last few lines address the issue of mass stigmatism of women, where they state, So why call a woman bad? From her, kings are born. From woman, woman is born, and without women, there would be no one at all. Therefore, you can see that Sikhism has been fighting for many of the same rights that people in America are fighting for as well. There are many distinct features of a Sikh, such as a turban, which only kings wore, so if everyone wore it, including women, then they were all considered kings and queens. The next distinct feature is the last name of singing core. In India, your social caste was given to you by your last name, so if everyone had the same last name, there would be no social class. Now, Sikhs do have some required clothing. They're called the five kids, but I won't be discussing them because they aren't in your handout, so please take some time to read them. Now it's time to talk about Sikhs in America. The Sikh American League Defense and Education Fund writes that the first Sikhs that came to America in the 1890s worked in the lumber mills of the Pacific Northwest, farms of California, and built railroads that would soon connect America. The first Sikh Gurdwara was built in 1912 in Stockton, California, and the first Asian American in Congress was a Sikh by the name of Dalip Singh Son from the 29th District of California. But in 1913, Webb and Haney Alien Land Act banned non-citizens from owning land in the U.S., which resulted in the famous battle in the Sikh community known as the United States vs. Bhagat Singh Tind in 1923. Tind, who was a U.S. World War I war veteran, came back to find his citizenship revoked and his house no longer under his name. This battle greatly impacted the movement of Sikh and Asian American citizenship. In the late 1970s and 80s, U.S. immigration became a bit loose, allowing many Sikhs to come to America. The mass migration during this time were probably most likely because of the Sikh massacre and genocide of 1984, in which the Indian government decided to attack and butcher its own people. My uncle saw this atrocity before coming to the U.S. in 1984. My mother and father both witnessed great hardships because they had to be wary of everyone around them due to the widespread hatred of Sikhs. Then, the Sikh coalition writes that the population of Sikhs grew to 500,000 in America. But then, 9-11 occurred which brought a whole new wave of discrimination and hatred towards Sikhs. Thank you.